Hi, I'm Diane Marie Collins, and I'm here visiting with Christy Silverstein of the PRSA Phoenix. Welcome. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about PRSA. PRSA is the largest organization of public relations professionals and communicators throughout the world. We have a Phoenix chapter here that's one of the largest chapters. We have about 300 members and basically we get together for various events, professional development, seminars, networking, things like that. Well, today was a really exciting event. You brought in a keynote speaker. Tell me about Paul. Yes, Paul Leinberger is with the Futures Group. He's a consumer trends expert. So he gave us some insights into consumer spending and what to expect in the next year. Hi, I'm Diane Marie Collins. I am here at the April PRSA luncheon, and my keynote speaker is here with me, Paul Leinberger of Futures Company. Welcome, Paul. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Oh, your presentation was so exciting. I would love just a few little notes on it. The Futures Trends, which you spoke to us about, how do PRSA members take that information? You gave it 55 minutes, actually a little longer than that. How do we take that information? Give me some points. Well, one of, the, one of the amazing things about where we are is we're now coming out of this great recession which started in 2007, right? It's 2012. Um, that's a long enough period of time, five years, to have changed both our attitudes and behavior. So the kind of consumer that you're talking to, PRSA is talking to, is a very different consumer than we were talking to pre-recession, 2007 and before that. And most of us have in our heads this view that hopefully the world will come back to the way it was but it's not and going get to better but it's, it's not, not going, going to, to. it's yeah. not going to no in fact in fact we've all changed our definition of value has changed in fundamental ways so it means the way we talk to consumers the kinds of products consumers are looking for where they buy them how they buy them all of that has changed so it's in a way all the things we once thought were most important have to be reconsidered. And that means from top to bottom, we are going to have to think about what we need to look at when we're, when we're marketing, when we're trying to get that word out, who we look to for those answers. Is that correct? That, that's right. Um, the way I like to think about it is, it used to be that the definition of value, you know, we all want to buy things that are good value, correct. good value for money. And, and that used to be what? That, that value definition was the higher the price, the better the quality. The lower the price, the lower the quality, right? Right. That's the way it always was. Well, today there's a brand new definition. So if you want to speak to that consumer, you have to talk about all the different aspects of this new definition of value. You also talked about trust, who we trust now in the marketplace. Tell me a little bit about that. I loved that. That was perfect. Well, if you go back and you look at post-World War II American history, it's always been the case that Americans have either believed in business when they didn't believe in government, or they believed in government and didn't believe in business. Correct. Right? Right. Well, this is the first time since, since World War II that we believe in neither. And, and so the question comes, if you don't believe in business and you don't believe in government, what who... What does that leave? Yeah, what does it leave? And, and, and of course the answer is yourself. Americans are the most self-reliant they've ever been. But it means that all, all purchase decisions, all the products and services that Americans buy, has to come through the filter of the individual. And what that individual believes is most important. That's never been the case before. So it means, for example, that it used to be that we would get an expert to, to talk to us about something. But we and, don't trust those. But we don't trust those experts, <laughs> right. We don't trust that restaurant reviewer. We don't trust that movie reviewer. You know, we don't trust that person who told us that was the best place to stay. Um, unless we, we know them. Unless we know them, that's right. So, word of mouth. And then, of course, the interesting thing in the world we live in today is that word of mouth is now word of mouse, right? Uh, correct, with our, with our blogs. You mentioned that, too, that a PRSA member should really pay attention to the blogs. Yeah, it's one of, the, one of the very interesting sort of happenstance of history that social networks developed at exactly the same time that our economy was going south. And as this thing has gotten deeper and deeper, and at the same time these um, social networks are getting stronger and stronger, what that's meant is that Americans have realized, well, if I only trust my friends and myself, I can use social networks to find out what's good and what isn't good in the marketplace. 
So I began to join Facebook and other kinds of social networks like that, not just to get in, in, in touch with my friends and find out what was going on with all my friends, but also to find out what kinds of things I should be buying because I trust my friends. So it, it's, the, it's the blogs, it's the social networks that really are the conversation of the marketplace today in a way that was never true before. It used to be that you didn't have to look at that stuff if you were in PRSA, um, but today it's fundamental to the way in which we do business. Totally. You have given us some great points and we thank you. And this is just one of the simple examples. You were here last year as well. This is one of the reasons why people should become members of PRSA. Would you I, agree? I completely agree. <laughs> totally. 100%. Well, again, we've been here at the April PRSA luncheon. Thank you again and be sure and come back soon.